Shalom. All praises to the Heavenly Father. Hatun Apukuya. Praise be to the Earthly Mother, the Pachamama, and all of her earthly angels, the Erkadeshwe. Praise be to the Holy Spirit, the Kahe, in the name of Mashiach, Matzah the Lamb, unification to the nation. So, guys, we have some interesting things to discuss. Um, I'm on my lunch and I wanted to discuss this real quick. And we're going to touch on the pre Adamic theory. Um, the creationist theory, both the same thing. Um, and we're also going to touch on something that's very common that a lot of so-called Hebrew Israelites use to supposedly prove that the Negroes are Shemites. And I'm not saying that they are or aren't, but they're using <laughs> they're they pretty much like what what our people do. They get real excited about things and they jump onto things, but they don't do enough deep level research to find out where perspectives are coming from. So we're going to find out why the Zondervan Pictorial Bible put the fact that the Negroes are not Hamites. We're going to find out why. So let's read this definition. Again, this is from the Zondervan Pictorial Bible. Ham, uh, perhaps hot. Now you're also, what you're going to see with a lot of this language is that there's a lot of perhaps, probably, maybe. Listen, these people have a Bible just like you. So I'm not really sure why people take their opinions seriously. I don't care if they say we're the chosen people or not. Their opinions are just as strong as me or mine or yours. They have the book just like we do. Do they have any more of a book? If they would, then they would use that as a reference, but they don't. So they're guessing. So why does their word matter any more than yours? You shouldn't need to use resources like this to, to figure things like this out, right? The youngest son of Noah, born probably about, look at this, probably about uh, uh, 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans and Canaanites. So why are they saying that the Negro are Shemites or are they just saying that they're not Hamites? Because in the same dictionary, if they were saying the Negroes were Shemites or even Japhethites, they would put it in the section of Shem. They went out of their way to say not the Negroes, but then they don't specify who the Negro is in the section of Shem or Japheth. And then people didn't look up the authors. They didn't look up where they're coming from, what perspective they're coming from. They didn't look up Zondervan Pictorial Bible. What type of agendas do they push? What perspectives are they coming from? All of this matters. All of this matters. Because in actuality, what you're doing is using their racist ass theories. But honestly, we're going to actually see that there's actually some truth to what they're saying. So let's get into it. And this is the creationist myth. And he's going to, uh, to touch on some things. And we're going to discuss Henry Morris. And this is all the racist uh, rhetoric that they were preaching in the South. Right? That they were preaching upon our people in the South. The white evangelicals. And all of their nonsense. And then people wonder why I act like they're nothing to me, that they're dogs and they're less than dogs. There's a reason why I do that. Because if they don't realize what they did to my brethren, I have nothing to say to them. They are dead to me. Like they just are. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not going to, uh, to tap dance <laughs> for them. I don't give a damn about none of these people. I don't. Uh, Henry Morris, founding father of modern young earth creationism, wrote in 1977 that the Hermetic races, including red, yellow, and black, were destined by their nature to be servants to the descendants of Shem and Japheth. Noah was inspired when he prophesied this. In Genesis 9, verses 25 to 27, the descendants of Shem are characterized by an inherited religious zeal. Those of Japheth 
by mental acumen, while those of Ham are limited by the peculiar, be, be, peculiarly concrete and materialistic thought structure inherent in Hamitic peoples, which even affects their language structures. These innate differences explain the success of the European and Middle Eastern empires as well as African servitude. Let's skip down. Morris is no fringe figure. On the contrary, he, more than any other individual, was responsible for the 20th century, the 20th century invention of young earth creation science. He was co-author of the Genesis Flood, which regards Noah's flood as, as responsible for sediments worldwide. He founded the Institute of Creation Research, of which Answers in Genesis is a later offshoot. Strong accusations require strong evidence. I have included, I have therefore included as an appendix some relevant passages from the beginning of the world, quoting at length to avoid any risk of misinterpretation. Very similar views to those of Morris were expressed by the esteemed psychologist Arthur Custance. Custance. Noah's Three Sons, 1975, published by the mainstream Christian publisher. Zondervan, oh, now part of Harper Collins. So, these people who actually sanction whatever is written in the Zondervan, uh, anything, they're coming from this same pre Adamic creationist viewpoint. And if not, they're coming from the perspective that Shem and Ham are white. I mean, not Shem and Ham. Shem and Japheth are white. And Ham are the red, yellow, and black races. Shem are the more, uh, you know, religious. Japheth are the creative minds. And the red, black, and yellow nations are the servants. But there's even, there's something even more quote-unquote racist than that. And that is the creationist theory. But I don't consider it racist. I don't. And when they're talking about the term Negro, you have to understand that usually they're talking about the American Negro because they're using it to justify slavery in the South. They, that's what they used it for. They used it to justify their own wickedness. So when they're using the term Negro, they're really only talking about the North American black. Whether he is an Indian or 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 an uh, a European that's why they're saying it. But let's continue. Uh, Castance and Morris certainly knew about each other as an intellectual, as was well, good, excuse me, certainly knew about each other as intellectual opponents. Morris favoring simple six day creationism while Castance championed the, uh, the gap theory, according to which geological time is concealed within the opening three verses of Genesis. However, uh, Morris clearly got there first, since he had published similar material in 1972, The Remarkable Birth of Planet Earth, while The Beginning of the Earth was an update of a work first published in 1965. Morris and other arth authors whom I cite use the word Negro, as I do for consistency when referring to their work. This word, unlike its toxic cousin, was not historically regarded as offensive, although it now sometimes is. For instance, the university... Okay, I don't need to know all that. But yes, he uses the term Negro, right? Pay attention. While Morris was the most effective 20th century uh, exponent of biblical creationism, his theories derive largely from those of the seven-day adventist George uh, McCready Price whose ideas derived in turn from those of Alan G. White, founder, prophetess of Adventism. White had spoken of the evils of crossbreeding. Price ascribed the variety of human races to the dispersal after Babel. There are the deleterious effects of inbreeding and environmental effects, which had given the Negro his dark skin, while Price said his mind became a blank.
Biblical literism and creationism were used to support racial discrimination and bans on interracial marriage until quite recently. Well, they should have kept that ban. <laughs> they should have kept that goddamn ban. Let me see. Let me see. Let me. I'm trying to get to the important part. Give me one second. Okay. The other and even more objectionable opinion, uh, option is to deny that the colored races uh, were descended from Adam in the first place. And this events and this version of events negroes were a separate creation and therefore not fully human this kind of belief regards racial segregation as neutral and mixed marriages as perversion in some versions negroes were created before adam in order to serve his descendants while in others inferior races negroes chinese and some more recently say jews are the offspring of eve and the serpent separate origin theory poly uh, Jainism has a long history and was at one time considered intellectually respectable. The the eminent uh, naturalist Luis Gazat, I don't know, who discovered the ice ages, thought that whites and blacks were separate creations. Although he believed they should be equal under the law, well, he is right about that. Um, he commissioned f uh, photographs of slaves for his anthropological studies. And last week, these became the subject of an ownership lawsuit between Harvard University and one of the slave's descendants, the creationist Alexander Winchell, professor at professor intern at Vanderbilt, the university. Okay, I don't need to read all that. But he argued um, in Adamites and pre-Adamites that humans existed before Adam and maintained that this belief was consistent with scripture. Um, however, separate origin theory was soon used, especially in the run up to the American Civil War to justify racism, slavery and segregation in the night in the 1840s. Samuel George Morton, for a while, professor at anatomy of anatomy at Pennsylvania Medical College and his collaborator, George Gilly, Gil, uh, Gilliden, uh argued for a separate creation on biblical grounds from examining mummies they had correctly concluded that african and middle eastern peoples were in existence three thousand years ago as much as they are today but this was only a thousand years after the date that the bible gives for noah's flood it followed that such diversity could not have arisen in so little time forcing them to conclude that the black race had a separate origin measuring their skulls they concluded that blacks had lower cranial capacity and hence lower mental capacities than whites, among other defects. <laughs> uh, John Van, uh, that dude, in a series of publications between 1848 and 1868, argued that the Negro was, set, was a separate creation from whom slavery was the natural state, accused abolitionists of promoting the ego the, the evil of miscegenation appealed to discon discontented and underprivileged whites in, in the north where he lived. So you get the point. Let's move down. The clergyman and publisher Bucker H. Payne. Um, and his other name is Ariel or the ethnological origin of the Negro in 1867 regarded the curse of Ham as irrelevant to the issue of slavery, since the Negro was a pre-Adamic creation without a soul. Miscegenation was the sin that led to the flood, and pain anticipates modern young earth creationism. The mountains were raised to their present height by the convulsions associated with Noah's flood. When the fountains of the deep were broken up, here Payne's geology anticipates that anticipates that Whitcomb 
and Morris's The Genesis Flood already mentioned as the foundational document of uh, 20th century uh, young earth creationism. Payne earned a belief and a rather dismissive obituary in the North in the New York Times on his death in 1883. But other uh, obituaries to Payne described him as the South's leading lo uh, logic uh, <laughs> logic logician logician. I don't know. Charles Carroll, the Negro as beast or in the image of God in the 1900s, cited Winchell, see above, and described Negroes as pre-Edemic, one of Genesis' beasts, but equipped with hands and the power of speech, the better to serve his master, the white man. Carroll acts as a bridge between 19th century separation, separate origin creationism and present-day extremist groups discussed in the next session. Section. So I'm not going to read any more of this. I'll leave both, I'll leave all these links in the description. But there's there's more you could look to. There's also another one right here. And you can look into this. This is, this is called the pre-Adamite theory. But here's the thing. They're actually not wrong. Now, I don't know about the Negro because again, they have a personal beef with the Black American because they you know they're beefing particularly with the with the sons of Joseph right now because this is Egypt, right? So that's what they're doing. And that's what, that was the theologies that they were pushing before, right? Um, but they're not wrong. They're actually not wrong. And let's go to that real quick. If I could find it, if they close me out. So we are in Seth chapter four, verse 16. I think. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, let's let's. Yeah. Um, Seth chapter four, verse 16. This is the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene of Haggai. And it came to pass that when Enoch had said these words, he began to see a very ancient place. And he had never beheld any place like it before. And he saw the light of a fire from a little ways off. And when he approached in his seeing there upon the ground, he beheld a little child leaning against the bush and the light of the fire shone, shone gently upon him and he was asleep. And there were those who moved about the near about near the fire and their shadows sometimes fell across the child. And Enoch looked and said, Lord, who is this child? And the child was very brown and he had a full head of black hair. And Matzah the lamb said, it is your first father, Yadzaquad. And Enoch looked intently to see, and he saw the child awaken. And it was at the time soon after he had first learned to walk. And the child was dull of feeling and downcast in his manner and his appearance. And he was dirty with the dust of the earth, and he was unkept, and he was wrapped about with a skin of fur. So this is before uh, Matzah, Matzah's spirit went into the first father. Now, there were other creations, right? There were other creations that were dull and unfeeling and they were newly made. They came, they were made from the dust of the earth. But before then, you know, his spirit were, was not in everything. Once his spirit went into this one child, all of the other creations, they left this child. Right. But then, you know, this child was, was uh, able to pretty much, uh, you know, exercise things in the spirit of the most high. But everyone was very brown with a full head of black hair. No one changed into white people. Adam, quote unquote, Adam was not white. He was very brown, just like the quote unquote pre-Adamites. So he's not wrong, but he he's on some other stuff. When he starts saying, well, the Caucasian, because they're, you know, I don't know why he, even, where did he even get that from? I guess, listen, when we don't have the Holy Spirit with us, they can say any damn thing. Truly. Right. And we also have to stop pushing their doctrines and acting like we know what we're talking about. We look stupid when we do that. We have to do a bit more research. We have to be a bit more knowledgeable. 
I truly do think that a lot of those, not all of the so-called white people, because they come from different places, many of which don't even have a goddamn soul because they did not come from the first father or the first mother. But the ones who do, you know, they some of them could be our people. Some of them are the children of Japhet. But a lot of them are Edom. And they push certain things because they hate us. They truly do hate us. And they seem to hate Joseph the most. That's why they personally uh, make it their mission to go against certain groups of people, such as the black Americans or the Mexicans. Right? They, they make it their mission to do stuff like that. I've noticed they have a very different disdain for those groups. Right? I've noticed that. Um, that's just my opinion, though. But we have to stop pushing uh, bad doctrine and we have to get to the source. We're able to do it now. I understand. We're just wait. We're waking up before. You know, we're going to try to scrap to find anything that we can. I understand that. But let's get better. Let's get better and let's dispel things. If Edom, if, if they're Edomites, I don't know who the hell else they can be. From how a lot of these different scriptures describe Esau, they fit that description incredibly well too well to the point where it can't be anyone else it can't be esau is supposed to be in power esau is supposed to be pretty much of the lineage of the catholics esau was supposed to be the ones who did most of the violence against us that was the habsburgs right those were the germans and the french the visigoths the conquistadors the catholic church the italians these are all the same people, not all of any of those groups, but they're among those groups. But if Esau has a certain look to him, then we're going to have a certain look to us. So I'm not coming against people because they have a certain phenotype, but I'm trying to get you to understand that if we didn't look a certain way before, then how can they be Esau? That does not make any sense. So my whole goal is to try to get to the truth. Let's look towards the truth. And that's all I have for you guys. Put that Zondervan pictorial Bible in the trash, bro. Seriously. These are the people who, that that's the perspective they're coming from. I'm not literally saying to put it in the trash, but stop using it to prove that so-called Negroes are, are Shemites. Because you that they, they think less, that much less of you. They're not even going to call you Hamites. They're not even going to call you that. And a lot of these evangelical churches, they've always had a different excuse. Oh, they're slaves because of the curse of Canaan. Oh, they're slaves because they're Hamites. Oh, they're slaves uh, because of this, because of that. Oh, they're pre-edemic. They they don't even have a soul. Those are all, those are all excuses because they don't want to feel guilty. All excuses. May peace be with you.